It's not every day that you see this sort of cold and rigid material behaving in this very sort of liquid and kind of almost sensual sort of a way. And it really, it changes the whole context of how you look at things. It's physical, it's exciting, it's almost like a sport in some ways. That glass is circulating and convecting inside the furnace before you ever even get your hands on it. It's moving before you touch it. You know, I feel fortunate enough that uh, somehow I was able to uh, realize that uh, it was the arts that I was interested in. Oak Ridge was a center of abstract thinking. You know, whether it's particle separation or, or you know, nuclear physics or something. I think by having a scientific background in working on my work in glass, you know, working on color chemistry and, and some things like that, it doesn't seem like it's a, you know, completely foreign universe. There's not much difference between an artist and a scientist. You know, you're trying to define yourself in the universe that you're living in. Well, there's a, a really finely tuned sensibility that I have developed over the course of time that allows me to manipulate that ball of clay into something exquisite, something really beautiful, um, something that's never been made before. Even if what I just made was a picture and, and what I'm about to make is a picture, they're not the same. The parts that I make functional parts. They entertain you in a way that music and sculpture and painting and poetry doesn't entertain you. you know, my parts entertain people in their hands. They entertain people on their tables, in the sink, in the refrigerator, you know, on the mantelpiece, in the garden. You know, those are worthy places for you to have exquisite objects. I don't like the word revival. It's never died. It doesn't need reviving. It's just, I'm adding my voice to it. I mean, I brought with me a whole training that was different from what somebody from here who was born into it would have. And I think that's often it's often the role of outsiders to come in and, and change the tradition a little bit. And so creating this synthesis could only have happened if I'd come from elsewhere. One of the things that I feel that I am doing that I'm trying to do is to speak for those that had no voices or whose voices have been silenced or who are afraid to speak. And I feel an obligation to try to do that. If you are going to take something on as your symbol, you have to be able to look at and accept all facets of it because you can't just dissociate what you want from it without understanding that people were killed, maimed, tortured under the auspices of that symbol. My grandchildren live in New Orleans. Look what happened there. To that devastation, there was no response to the horrid, horrid conditions that were going on in the convention center and the Superdome and everything else. A year before, you could not have told me 
that something like the devastation of Katrina would happen and the federal government would not come to the rescue. I would not have believed it. It was as if these people didn't count, that their lives were of value, and no one came to the rescue for days. And even now, a year or more later, the devastation is still absolutely overwhelming. It's, it's my hope that things are going to progressively get better. Time will tell. Time will tell. long lines without any movement slow down how the viewer sees something. If I'm working with an ultimate idea of something that's more provocative than the hands might reflect that more, you know. If it's something more lyrical then, you know, you, you might see more of that softness and other times that the fingers are really spastic. It's interesting when people try to find um, biographical parallels between the drama or the so perceived torment or unrest in these things because it's not about me you know it's about more of a collective accumulation of things that are larger than anything that I'm you now experiencing farming was just bad shape at the time it was really hard and um, as much as my parents would have liked me to stay and take over the farm, I don't know that it was really possible there that, that it could support another family. So um, away I went, you know. I left the farm, went to town, and went to work in a welding shop that also did machine work. And, and that's actually where I first got a, a glimpse of, of blacksmithing from an artistic sense. So it wasn't actually until I left the farm and, and started to discover that there was this whole world out there of artistic blacksmithing. And it was just, um, just rocked my world. I'm more engaged and a believer in the ideas and the reverberations than in the thing itself. It's not the piece, it's, that's just stuff. It's all hydrogen atoms and it's gonna go back to the earth. The ideas and the influences are really what we're here to do and if we do it right, that's immortality.